We're spinning the ringer. The ringer machine right here. This is made by Williams. This is a fun machine, you know. I'll tell you about the ringer machine another time because I want to tell you about why I have a ringer machine more so. The ringer machine, I only saw one other place, and that was in Playland in Lavalette. Now, when I was a kid, we grew up with a shore house on Bryn Mawr Avenue in, at that time, was North Lavalette. On the corner, we were on the beach block, on the corner of Bryn Mawr Avenue and Route 35 North, because Route 35 was separated at that point, you had North and South separated by a, a block of houses, was some very important icon places of my childhood. The first being Playland. We had the good fortune of having a miniature arcade right on our corner when we were kids growing up at the Shore House. I mean, there weren't arcades all around the Shore Houses. You had to go to the boardwalk for arcades pretty much. But here was one right on our corner, literally like eight houses down because we lived in the middle of the block. And Across the other side, the other corner on uh, Bryn Mawr Avenue was a Tasty Freeze. Did they even have Tasty Freeze anymore? But it was an ice cream chain, Tasty Freeze. And then across the street from that opened TP Subs and uh, another ice cream store and different little stores in that group. And down a little further from Tasty Freeze, just a few short little corners was, uh, we called it Arthur's, and it was actually a little supermarket. And we called it Arthur because the nice guy who worked there, his name was Arthur, and uh, he used to run the deli all the time. We would go there for lunch. So it was like a little oasis, a little world in its own when we lived on Bryn Mawr Avenue. But Playland is where I first learned to play pinball. So the late 60s Playland into the very early 70s, that is my Playland, the Playland that I knew. And I didn't even know it as Playland. When we were kids, we only knew it as Freddy's because Freddie Scarpa was the owner of Playland, and my mom always would talk to him, and you know, we always knew him as Freddy's, so we were going down to Freddy's. My mom called it Freddy's, and everybody knew Playland as Freddy's, and Freddy's as Playland. And the Playland that I knew was very dear to me, and I tried to save what I could by recreating the Playland that I knew. And there were two walkways up Playland. Um, it was really like four garage doors wide, single car garage doors wide. And the left side was the predominant side. When you first walked in, there was some baseball machines, the old Williams baseball machines. And then there was a line of pinballs going up. And the island in the middle, uh, the one side opposite the pinballs was the rifle games. And I loved the rifle games. The other aisle was not as predominant. They had skee-ball there, the old skee-balls we played when we were young, but we didn't play the skee ball that much there and they had some other odd games like shuffle bowling and you know bowler ball bowlings and novelty games like Peppy the Clown was there and the steam shovel but the main row was pinball on the north side when you walked in and it started with the row of baseballs so this row here is actually my recreation of Playland now you have to use the exception of this major league Playland did not have a major league it just happens to be sitting there because I needed a spot but if you look to the left of major league you will see disassembled baseball machines those are the running man units sitting on top of them now why would they not be in the machine because the way they constructed it the running man unit was exposed on the machine when you took the head off of it and they are disassembled right now so there are actually four baseball machines there these are the late 50s baseball games by Williams pennant baseball um, 
I don't know what they called all they had it was the same machine with slight variations but one was called pennant one might have been called um, uh, major league or big league or something like that but they were basically the same game with slight variations and they were the first things you walked into when you walked in after that the next machine was this one over here turf champ now this game you know, there's so much stuff on top of it. It's not fair not to show this game because it's such a special game. And this is only styrofoam, although that stuff's probably going to fall. If you can see under there, there are six horses. And as you play the game, the horses advance up the line. Now, the feature of this game is that you want to try to get your horse to the finish line first and before you run out of balls playing the game. So it's a five ball game and you have the six horses on the top and you have a selector button right here. So before you shot your first ball, you would push the button and you would light up which horse you want to choose. Now that horse would be the horse you want to win and as you would play certain bumpers would move certain horses so you would try to make that horse advance further and you had only a flipper on each side one little flipper here another little flipper there so it wasn't a game you got a lot of action playing you were basically gambling on the horse very very nice game old game they call it a wood rail because the sides here where it holds the glass are wood instead of the more modern ones that came out in the 60s which were metal on the sides holding the glass. A lot of times wood rail machines had wooden legs. This model had metal legs. So it was the probably around a 58, 59 in that area. The next one down was suspense. Now oddly enough suspense had its history. I can't even move that. That's heavy. Now suspense was the very machine that we used to play in Sue's Pizza, which was just down the street a couple blocks. And that's the one I talk about in my books where you had all the people who were working on the good humor trucks. And they would go to Sue's Pizza at the end of the night. And there was one pinball that they would always be playing. The guys in their white suits with their blue webbed belt and their coin changer to click out with the tubes, you know, the, the coins for the ice cream sales. Suspense was over there. And Suspense, I found out later, if my memory serves me right, was actually owned by Playland, that they put it in there on a percentage. So eventually when they switched the machine out, Suspense made its way over to Playland. And we got to play it over there. So it's got to be in my lineup. This is my Playland lineup. Touchdown by Williams. I played this all the time. It was another one of my favorites. Gunsmoke by Chicago Coins. Mini Zag by Bally. Very, very hip game. They tried to do it with purples and kind of angled, you know, rollovers. You know, it's certainly different. Fun Fest was the first game they had with the DC bumpers. It was very, very fast. A very fun game. Over here, you got Action hiding by the boxes over here. Action. Here you have the Williams 8 Ball. Another one blocked by more stuff. You can see a little bit from this side on the back glass of it. The Williams 8-Ball, Funland, Olympic Hockey. These were the games that lined up and were the most played by myself when I was a kid back in the day. So this line here is my, my Playland tribute. And of course, across the way from the pinballs and the baseball games are the rifle games that also were my memories from Playland. They didn't have a Hercules, but they had a Crusader, and Hercules was very much the same game as Crusader. These were ball bounce games. So you have a Hercules here. Which one is this one? Oh, this is another Hercules. Here's a Titan. These are all similar with ball bounces. Another Titan, but here's the one Playland had, Crusader. And you shoot the balls, and the balls would bounce up inside the machine. You try to get them to line up three in a row, four in a row, five in a row, and you collect the bonus. Then they had the Safari. One of my favorites, William Safari. They had the Genko rifle game. They had the Genko big top. They had these very machines there. They didn't have this exhibit shooting gallery. That came to Central Arcade in uh, Seaside, but they had this one, the champion score, the rifle range, the champion. This you're shooting at a pinball inside on it. And right next to that one was one of my favorites. 
Here it is. Can you see it? It's the Bullseye. I don't want to knock that glass over. It's the Bullseye Gallery made by Chicago Coins. Really, really great gun game. And I think I have one downstairs also. I'm concerned about that glass because I don't have the molding on it. And next to that one, buried back there, there's another good one. It's a twin rifle, I'm pretty sure. And over here, you got a Funland and a Pirate Gun. And then a couple rifle galleries over here. So I tried to line it up similar to what it was in Playland. It's not 100% exactly, but you know what? I tried to stay with theme and even to the back wall. Against the back wall in Playland was Bally Gold Rush and Williams Trade Winds hiding over there. Here's the Williams soccer machine buried under here. The Williams soccer. I think there's two of them side by side. Another really great game. And Williams Hollywood. Yeah, they only had one in Playland, but this game was over in the front on the other wall, across from the baseballs. It was the first pinball coming in, and it was always busy. It was always going by the jukebox, and uh, the Williams Hollywood, that was a hard one to track down, but I had to get it. But again, these are all the machines of my childhood, my past. And even this one here that he was looking at before, the Sky Gunner, this interesting game here where you, you know, you're looking inside this big unit, odd-looking thing. They had one of those in Playland, and they had all kinds of interesting games. They had Peppy the Clown, they had the Steam Shovel, the Bean Crane. All these things were my history, my, my childhood. So I wanted to have it as a tribute. This was my Playland tribute area up here in Randyland, and of course the shelves up top were going to have different displays of period prizes and all the things of this nature. So this is what we have. It's part of Randyland. Everything was done with a reason. Everything was done with a theme, and everything was done with a purpose. And and this is what it's all about. And we all started right here at the Ringer. And the Ringer they had in Playland also it was over at the end by the pool tables that they had, and it was another great game where you tried to get the horseshoe to land onto the ringer. So now you got to see a little bit of my childhood through my collection of my childhood, through my Playland collection right here at the wonderful world of Randy. And we're gonna leave you with that. And someday we'll talk about individual specific machines when we get more time to pull things out. But we're gonna say next time because we're gonna say goodbye for now from the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Bye guys. My ringer gotta get that.